Today is Wednesday, March 11, 2020, and it is 4.31. I'm going to call the Chino Valley Fire District Board of Directors regular board meeting to order. And roll call shows all board members are present. And we're going to adjourn to closed session pursuant to government code section 54956.8. The Board of Directors will meet with its designated negotiators, Fire Chief Chim, Tim Shackelford, and future facilities ad hoc committee members, Director John DeMonico and Vice President Sarah Ramos Evinger, regarding real property owned by the City of Chino Hills and located on an undeveloped parcel located on the south side of Soco Canyon at the intersection of Soco Canyon and Pipeline Avenue. The Board of Directors will instruct the district's negotiators concerning the price and terms of payment. Thank you. Wednesday, March 11, 2020, and it is 6 p.m. I'm going to call the Chino Valley Fire District Board of Directors regular board meeting in order. And we are coming out of closed session. I do want to correct, make one correction. Uh, when I read the, uh, the statement, uh, when we went into closed session, it was noted that uh, members, uh, Director John DeMonico and Vice President Sarah Ramos Evinger, were part of the negotiation committee. They are not. That ad hoc committee was. Uh, suspended some time ago. And with that, if I could ask legal to uh, make any reports. Yes, President, board members, and members of the public, the uh, board met in closed session to discuss the one item that is listed on the agenda, and there was no action uh, that was taken that's required to be reported. Thank you. All right, I would ask uh, everyone, please silence your phones. And I want to remind everyone that the district will be video recording the entirety of the board meeting. And also, out of an abundance of caution, we will, we will refrain from shaking hands with those being recognized this evening. Additionally, we suggest those in attendance also refrain from shaking hands. Please remember to frequently wash your hands and avoid touching your face. With that, I would ask you all to rise for the flag salute and remain standing for the invocation. Ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please bow your heads with me. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this beautiful day and the much needed rain. Lord, I pray that uh, tonight you'll be in our midst, that you would give us wisdom to help us to make decisions that will honor you and bless our cities. I pray for our firefighters, our administrators, and our chiefs, that you would continue to protect and watch over them. I pray for those that are sick or injured, for your strength and comfort and healing on them. And I ask, Lord, that you continue to watch over our families that have made so many sacrifices for us. I thank you for those we recognize tonight, for their accomplishments and dedication to excellence, integrity, faithfulness, and respect continue to watch over them, guide them, and give them wisdom to fulfill the work that you have in store for them. Thank you for your love, your grace, and your mercy. Thank you for the privilege and honor to serve our fire district in the cities of Chino and Chino Hills. And we pray this in your precious name. Amen. Thank you. <clears throat> All right. Uh, to the clerk or board members, are there any changes on the agenda? A little distraction going. We have no changes. Thank you. Presentation and announcements. Proclamation National Donate Life Awareness Month. Rob Ralston, One Legacy Ambassador, please come forward. Whereas organ tissue, organ tissue, marrow, and blood donations are life-giving acts recognized worldwide wide as expressions of compassion to those in need, whereas more than 112,000 individuals nationwide and more than 21,000 in California are currently on the national organ transplant waiting list, and on average 17 people die each day while waiting due to the shortage of donated organs. Whereas more than 600,000 units of blood per year are needed to meet the need in California, 
whereas at any given time, 18,000 patients are in need of volunteer marrow donors. Whereas a single individual's donation of, a, of the heart, lungs, liver, kidneys, pancreas, and small intestine can save up to eight lives, donation of tissue can save and heal the lives of more than 75 others, and a single blood donation can help three people in need. Whereas millions of lives each year are saved and healed by do donors of organs, tissues, marrow, and blood, whereas the spirit of giving and decision to donate are not restricted by age or medical condition, Whereas over 16 million Californians have signed up with the state authorized Donate Life California donor registry to ensure their wishes to be organ, eye, and tissue donors are honored. Whereas the Chino Valley Fire District recognizes National Donate Life Awareness Month by flying flags at all fire stations throughout the month of April raising awareness. <clears throat> now therefore be it proclaimed that the Chino Valley Fire District Board of Directors proclaim the month of April as National Donate Life Awareness Month, presented at the regular meeting held today. And up here, I'd like to give you that proclamation. Fantastic. Here, we hold it up, let Masio get our picture. Ah, Hi. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank uh, President uh, Luth and uh, all the esteemed directors of the board, some very familiar faces here. Um, we've done this now. Uh, the Chief uh, Shackelford, I'll never be able to uh, thank you enough. We started this seven years ago. Flags flying on all seven fire stations. And uh, This is obviously really dear to my heart. My life was saved through organ donation. Eight years ago, this past Christmas, I uh, got really sick, um, had a hernia surgery at St. Jude's in Fullerton. And uh, I had hepatitis when I was young, so I had a weakened liver to begin with. And then uh, the hernia surgery, I got a MRSA virus, staph infection, then went undiagnosed for six months, and um, by the time they discovered um, the problem, uh, my liver was um, destroyed and one of my kidneys was half gone, so um, I went right on the transplant list. I was really sick. I was down to about 120 pounds. I'd go into a coma for a week at a time for about three years, and uh, uh, so I was on that transplant list for almost three years. Um, my wife was at a caregiver's meeting because it was pretty much driving soup bananas. And um, so she was going with our two daughters who quit their jobs to come home and take care of me. And she said, get your husband dual listed. Uh, I was about 100 times down the list in California from getting the liver that I needed. Um, I got dual listed in Memphis, Tennessee, and I got the transplant in three months. Um, Went back there, jumped through all the hoops, um, got established um, uh, a place to stay. And the phone rang at midnight one night on December 17th. They said, get here as fast as you can. They put a man on life support. Uh, my donor was from Tennessee and the donor family. Um, we got on a plane, flew into Memphis, got off the plane. I went straight to surgery and woke up with a second chance. So. As soon as I was strong enough, I said, I'm going to make sure more people get lucky like I did. So right now, um, uh, like uh, President Luth said, uh, there's 112,000 people waiting. You could fill the Coliseum and the parking lot. That's how many people are waiting for the phone to ring for them. And there's about 17 people a day. The phone doesn't ring for them. Uh, I was one of the lucky ones. So. Uh, um, the good news is we had 8% more successful transplants in 2019 over 2018. Uh, 1,619 lives were saved through organ donation. 1,616 uh, people from, that were blind from uh, corneal blindness were given back their sight. 
And uh, so, and it's, and it's because of awareness programs like this. It's because of moments like this that we're changing all that. So thank you from the bottom of my heart for all you do. And uh, I'll be looking forward to seeing those flags fly. Thank you very much. Explore post 9-11 recognition. All right, could I ask firefighter paramedic Philip Vasquez to join me, please? How you doing? <laughs> Got to get used to that. The Explorer program is a component of the Chino Valley Fire District and a division of the Boy Scouts of America Learning for Life. The program is designed to introduce the Explorer to the fire service as a possible career through training and participation in actual situations. Explorers have the opportunity to work with the community, ride along with paramedic engine companies, compete in Explorer muster events, and attend the Inland Empire Fire Explorer Academy. The position of Explorer is a volunteer position but can pay many dividends in experience and training for an individual interested in a career in the fire service. Each year, certain high achieving individuals are highlighted and recognized by the Flat Explorer program. Tonight, we have invited the top recipients to be recognized. And now, if uh, Firefighter Vasquez, if you would say a few words, please. All right, thank you. I just wanna start by, uh, by thanking our fire district Obviously, our, our board of directors, our uh, fire chief, and our chief officers. And I'd like to extend a, a special thanks to uh, Battalion Chief Joe DeSoto uh, for entrusting us in this uh, huge undertaking of the Fire Explorer program. This is now uh, my, my fourth year being involved with the program. Uh, it would be a second year where we're taking a, a lead role with the program. But it's definitely not something to be taken lightly, definitely not something that um, is all an individual effort. Uh, just like it takes a, a village to raise a child, it takes a fire district to be able to successfully raise uh, the, young and, uh, the young men and women coming up in the Explore program. Uh, I truly believe that, that everyone that is involved with the program, which is all of us, a majority of us have been involved with the Explore program coming up. So I truly believe um, the positions that we're in to be able to raise our young explorers is something we're truly made to do and not just paid to do. So we do take our, the, the growth of our youth um, seriously. And uh, not only in this program are we able to uh, train our future firefighters today, but more than that, we're able to, to raise up future leaders. And I believe future leaders is what's gonna be able to create successful individuals and be uh, productive members of the society. So uh, with all that, um, our fire board, our fire district, very supportive of, of what we're doing. And um, I'm just privileged to be in the position that I'm in today. Uh, I was an explorer when I was younger, and like I mentioned, many of us were. And uh, now 16 years later, I'm still significantly impacted by being an explorer when I was younger, because now I'm in a position where I can actually give back and can continue to pour into those young individuals who I hope appreciate. But uh, with all that, I just want to again say thank you. As your name is called, please come up and remain up front after receiving your award for a group photo. Explorer Faith Alvarez, please come forward. So I'm going to go ahead and read this. Congratulations on receiving the Fire Explorer Community Service Award. Your dedication and devotion to the Fire Explorer program and the Chino Valley community is commendable. Explore Matthew Elish, please come forward. Congratulations on receiving the Ride Along Award by exceeding the Ride Along expectations. 
your commitment to the Fire Explorer program and the Chino Valley community is commendable. Explore Adrian Renteria. Congratulations on receiving the Fire Explorer Commitment to Service Award. Your service and dedication to the Chino Valley Fire District and Fire Explorer Program is commendable. Thank you. Explorer Derek Rickardson. Hey, I have two recognitions here. First is congratulations on receiving your Fire Explorer Leadership Award. And the other is congratulations on receiving the Fire Explorer Post 9-11 um, Service Award. Well done. Can we please take a group photo at this time? Thank you. <clears throat> also being recognized tonight are five fire explorers that have aged out of the Explorer program. The age requirement for the Explorer program is 14 through 21 years of age. As I call your name, please come forward. Explorer Jonathan Chong. And I'll just read this plaque for your participation as a fire explorer for the Chino Valley Fire District. Your dedication and commitment to the program is commendable. We wish you success in your future career goals in the fire service. Congratulations. Explorer Derek Colon. For your participation as a fire explorer for the Chino Valley Fire District, your dedication and commitment to the pro program is commendable, and we wish you success in your future career goals in the fire service. Congratulations. Explorer Trey Maniafiga. For your participation in the Fire Explorer in the Chino Valley Fire District, thank you. Your dedication and commitment to the program is commendable, and we wish you success in your future career goals in the fire service. Congratulations. Explorer Eric Mungia. All right, for your participation as fire explorer in the Chino Valley Fire District, your dedication and commitment to the program is commendable. And we wish you success in your future career goals in the fire service. Congratulations to you. Thank you. 
explore Anthony Ramos. And for your participation as a fire explorer for the Chino Valley Fire District, your dedication and commitment to the program is commendable. We wish you success in your future career goals in the fire service. At this time, we're going to take a quick one-minute pause to allow the explorers and their families to exit the boardroom and meet out the front of the building for additional photos. Presentations, medical response crew recognition. On behalf of the Board of Directors, I would like to congratulate and thank the medical response crew being recognized tonight and acknowledge your outstanding performance on November 16, 2019, that resulted in a life saved. Your actions reflected the highest standard of conduct and service, and you are to be commended. President Luth, members of the board, staff, and members of the public, tonight we are going to present a unit citation award, and I'd like to give you a little background on that. The unit citation is awarded to all members of a unit or units that bring great credit upon themselves and or the fire district by their courageous, outstanding, or unusual performance of duty that is significantly beyond that normally expected and may be based on a single act or exemplary work over an extended period of time. Uh, so before I get into the details of what occurred during this incident, I want to let everyone know that we have permission from Captain Bill Heitman to publicly discuss this topic because it gets into some of his personal medical information. And I want to extend my appreciation to Bill for being willing to share that as it makes it much easier to talk about what occurred. And he's been completely an open book since this happened, so we do appreciate that, Bill. On November 16th, 2019, at approximately 3.42 p.m., the crew of Station 63 A-Shift was conducting a station tour with a local family. During the visit, Captain Heitman alerted the team over the PA system that they had an emergency call, causing the tour to be cut short. Once the crew showed their visitors out of the station, Captain Heitman told the crew that the emergency was for him. He was experiencing a variety of symptoms, including nausea, vomiting, and pain in his arm. The crew immediately began assessing and treating their captain with advanced life support equipment that is on all frontline CVFD equipment. They quickly determined Captain Hyman was experiencing a significant cardiac emergency as the EKG monitor displayed STEMI, which stands for ST elevation myocardial infarction, or more simply, a heart attack. Engineer Brian Wofford called Comm Center, requested a medic squad in an ambulance to respond to Fire Station 63 for an employee with a medical issue. While awaiting the arrival of the other units, Firefighter Paramedic Matt Robertson and Engineer Wofford continued to assess and treat Captain Heitman. The treatment was consistent with local protocols for cardiac emergencies and consisted of IVs, medication, cardiac monitoring, and continuous waveform capnography. Medic Squad 62 and the ambulance arrived and prepared Captain Heitman for transportation to San Antonio Regional Hospital due to the cardiac capabilities at that facility. While en route to the hospital, while en route to the hospital, Firefighter Paramedic Matt Robertson and firefighter paramedic Mark Hughes, who's now Captain Mark Hughes, uh, continued to assess and treat Captain Heitman. Shortly after arriving at the hospital, Bill went into cardiac arrest. He was no longer breathing on his own and had no pulse. The crew quickly sprang into action and began high-performance CPR. After approximately four, four minutes of high-performance CPR, Bill had a return of spontaneous circulation. Uh, once that was achieved, the San Antonio Regional Hospital cardiac care team was able to reperfuse Bill's heart in the cath lab, effectively improving the occlusions in his arteries that caused the heart attack. 
the quick and professional actions of Brian Wofford, Matt Robertson, Mark Hughes, Chris Nelson, and the staff at San Antonio Regional Hospital all played a role in Bill being alive and well today. The fire district is committed to seeing the Chino Valley become a heart safe community, and we look forward to a long sustainable relationship with partner agencies and facilities that share in this commitment. And we're gonna present the awards here momentarily, and then we're gonna actually ask Captain Heitman to come up and, and share uh, his experience in a few words as well. I actually have to take my glasses off to read. I wrote my comments down so that I could stay brief. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, esteemed board members, Chief Shackelford, good evening. There's other business on the schedule tonight, so I will attempt to be as brief as possible. To those who don't know me, my name is Bill, Captain Heitman professionally. A short while ago, November 16th, Around 15, 30 hours to be precise, I suffered a fatal heart attack while on duty. Fatal sounds wrong, given that I'm standing here addressing you right now. My story is a bit long, so I won't be telling it tonight, though I would be happy to tell it to any who would care to hear it at a later time. I'm here because soon after my, I returned home and began my recovery, I called Chief Atkinson and asked him if it would be possible to have a short time at a fire board meeting so that I could thank and recognize the peop all the people involved in saving my life. He not only said yes, he was as excited as, as me at the idea. He only asked if we could delay the scheduling of the event long enough to prepare and do it justice. So finally we're here feels like Christmas to me. 
This is a night of thanksgiving, so I will begin to attempt the impossible. How could words ever be enough? Some things transcend the physical world. They're outside of time and space, but I'll try anyway. First, I think it goes without saying to anyone who was there that I stand before you a living miracle. With that in mind, I would like to thank the miracle worker, my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, in whom, whose glory this was accomplished. God does miracles every day. That being said, he most often chooses to perform those miracles through the hands and tools of willing heroes. Among the heroes I will thank and recognize tonight are the EMS personnel who, a few years ago, looked into the future and asked the department to take a very expensive, labor-intensive leap of faith into the world of high-performance CPR. My first thank you goes to the heroes in the administration who supported that idea. Thank you, Chief Shackelford, and everyone in your administration. No venture of this size could have gone anywhere without that support. My second thank you goes to the heroes serving on this and previous fire boards, who believed the dream of saving even one life that would have otherwise been lost was worth the expense and with that in mind, approved the increased spending. Thank you all. Heroes are often not those seen on the streets at the head of the fray. However, without whom, victory would be impossible. Thank you all. Now to the boys who saw it not abuse for me to place such a test and burden on their lives and sanity. To Matt Robertson, who first advised Brian and I that I, unknowingly was suffering the most fatal cardiac event that can be experienced. His transition from crew member to the operational commander in charge of my life was nothing short of awe-inspiring. His expression went from sheer terror at what he saw on the monitor screen to fierce, angry determination. His visage was truly fearful to behold. Thank you, Matt. My next thank you is to Brian Wofford, one of my closest friends in whom I would trust my life and all that I have. Brian moved to assist Matt, but Matt was doing fine on his own. I told Brian, you've been doing my job for more than a year to prepare for promotion, so grab some radios and get to work. He did just that. He arranged for every facet of emergency care and equipment to be pressed into duty to save my life. Thank you, Brian. My next thank you goes to Mark Hughes. During my ride to the hospital, he juggled phones, radios, accomplished communication to the hospital and others, all while assisting with drugs, dosages, consulting with Matt on how to proceed, treatment options, all this while sirens screamed, horns blasted, radios insistently blaring and phones ringing. It was pure pandemonium bordering on anarchy. Trust me, I was there. Thank you, Mark. Last but not least, I would like to thank Chris Nelson. Chris arrived at Station 63 and immediately began assisting in my care. When I was loaded, he followed the squad, doing everything he could to assist in clearing the way to the hospital. At the end of the seemingly endless 31-minute drive through almost supernaturally congested traffic, he exited the squad and rush, rushed to assist once more. As soon as I was moved to the bed in the emergency treatment room, he was immediately called into action. He was given the first crack at cracking every bone in my chest. Seriously, look at the size of the guy. He was my heart when it stopped. When my heart refused to beat, he beat it for me, and beat it he did. Thank you, Chris. Now, I hope I haven't run over my time too awful much. I just have a couple more comments and they are to do with praise of the Chino Valley Fire Department received by the personnel in the hospital who were there when this was going on, who had a front row seat to the theater. 
I was in the hospital. I was in the CCU for two days and moved to a totally separate wing. I was there for five days. Over that five days, I was visited repeatedly by just average workers in the hospital, nurses, doctors, who were there and saw what was going on. They were all amazed. I was asked, are all firemen as efficient at what you do as you guys are? Um, is every fire department like Chino Valley Fire Department? Um, I had people that said, I was watching and it looked like a well-rehearsed television show. It didn't look real. Requests were made and filled immediately by the fire personnel. Apparatus was at their hands and utilized immediately. The care and coordination that went on was amazing to the doctors that came to visit me. I had one person who referred to it as like watching the ballet. She said it was like watching a dance in Sioux. And over and over, Maciel was with me one evening when one of the people came in. Um, you guys need to be proud of yourselves. This organization, from the fire chief to the person who turns off the lights in this building at night, everyone plays a part. There's no one greater, no one lesser. This is an amazing organization you work for. I stand here. I'm proof. This is a place to be for years to come, for your entire career. Look back on this. When you find yourself wondering, why do I put up with this? This is why, and I'm not alone. Our percentage of returning to life, we call it ROSC, in Chino Valley is higher than anyone in the area. You guys need to be proud of yourself. Pride is a good thing when it's for a good reason. And with that, I will say good evening, good night. Thank you so much for letting me just say thank you. I'm here because I asked for a time to say thank you. So thank you. Thank you wives for putting up with these guys and letting them come to work. <laughs> so with that, I'll close. Thank you for giving me back to my wife and children. Could we get the crew to go up front with a picture for a picture with Bill, please? item under presentations, Employee of the Year. Fleet Facilities Coordinator Steve Burns, please come forward. Steve Burns has been with the Chino Valley Fire District for five years. Steve and his wife Sherry have been residents of Chino for more than two decades. They have two adult children, Brent and Stevie. Steve is a graduate of Diamond Bar High School and the California State Contractors License School. He has over 20 years of experience as a contractor, and throughout his career, Steve has worked across a wide range of companies. Before coming to the fire district, Steve was a local business owner where he perfected his mechanical and business practices. As the fleet and facilities coordinator for the fire district, Steve handles, re handles repairs, general maintenance, and co coordination of large projects. He has been involved in the procurement development and completion of our new maintenance facility and has implemented new business practices, including a robust fleet maintenance program. 
Steve is involved in several special programs that include the Heart Safe, Bleed Safe program, Make a Child Smile, and the Remembering Win program. His talents and experience have been put to good use in the, with the installations of the AED's trauma kits and senior citizen smoke detectors. Steve is a proud member of the community, and when not bus busy building his next project, he can be found volunteering his time at district community events and staying busy designing and producing signs, plaques, and trophies. He also enjoys traveling to Cancun, Cabo San Lucas, and the Colorado River in Parker, Arizona with his family. Congratulations, Steve, on being selected as the 2020 Employee of the Year. Firefighter Paramedic Matthew Robertson, please come forward. Matt Robertson is a firefighter paramedic and a four-year veteran of the Chino Valley Fire District. Matt and his wife Crystal reside in Huntington Beach with their two sons, Barron and Bowden. Matt grew up in Chino Hills and graduated from Ayala High School. He attended Mount San Antonio Colleges, College for his fire sciences and Riverside Community College for his fire academy. He attended Orange Coast College for his paramedic preparation, re received his paramedic certification from NCTI in 2010, and received his bachelor's degree in EMS management from Columbia Southern University. Matt was nominated as Firefighter of the Year by his peers for his commitment to the district. He is an urban search and rescue, swift water rescue team member, a certified diver, driver, and an international uh, association of firefighters survive, survival instructor. He has competed in the annual California EMS and Disaster Conference, CFED, paramedic competition, and placed first in 2018 and second in 2019 with team member Adam Barker. Matt's positive attitude, professionalism, and solid work ethic are just a few of his attributes. He serves on the Fire Ground Survival Committee and is a new hire instructor. He is a member of the Chino Valley Fire Foundation Committee and is the new facilities coordinator for the Make a Child Smile program. He is on the St. Patty's Festival Committee and serves as a member of the ALS Association Golden West Chapter. In his personal life, Matt enjoys skiing, mountain biking, endurance sports, and camping with his family. Congratulations, Matt, on being selected as the 2020 Firefighter of the Year. Thank you. 
Okay, with that, we're going to take a five-minute break. We'll start up at about 6.50, 6.51. And uh, if anybody needs to take additional photos, please take that opportunity now. Thank you. Public communications. This is a time and place for the general public to address the board of directors about subjects that do not appear elsewhere on the agenda. The public may address items on the agenda at the time addressed by the board. Due to board policy and Brown Act requirements, action may not be taken on any issue not on the agenda. When you address the board, please come up to the podium, state your name and address, which is optional, prior to making your remarks. Please limit your comments to five minutes. And I believe we have one request to speak. Yeah, I have one written request from Sylvia Nash. My name is Sylvia Nash, and I'm from Chino Hills, California. And I'm here to thank the people that were involved in the Chino Valley Mayor's Prayer Breakfast, to our Mayor Art Bennett, to Eunice Uloa, who were the hosting mayors. A special thank you to the board members that were there, uh, Sarah Evinger, who was part of the committee, John DeMonico, Harvey Liu, thank you for attending, for Chief Shackelford, and the other, um, the other chiefs that were there were so grateful. And a special uh, gratitude for, from the committee to the Chino Valley Fire Foundation for their sponsorship and for the sponsorship of the table. And it was just a packed house. In fact, it was overflowing. And we just had a wonderful time. And we're looking forward to having another one again next year. But our gratitude for all who tended our great gratitude for the uh, committee that worked on it, and we were just very grateful for the wonderful success of our first one that is resurrected again. So thank you very much. Thank you. Do we have any uh, anyone else? See none. Okay. Liaison report, Suzette Dang, San Bernardino County, 4th District. Good evening, board members, staff, audience members, Chief Shackelford. Suzette Deng with County Supervisor Kurt Hagman's office. I'm here to share an um, update on the coronavirus. And I know there's many questions and concerns from the public, so I want, I'm here to address what the uh, latest um, stance with the county is. So yesterday, um, the county de declared local health emergency, not because we have any proven cases, only is the reason, um, let me repeat, no local cases have been reported to the county. Although cases have been identified in neighboring Riverside and LA and Orange counties, the purpose of the declaration is not to alarm people or the community, but to increase the focus on preparedness for both the public and county government departments and agencies. So number one, please do not panic. Uh, number two, be prepared. And we've had many inquiries from the public regarding public events uh, or mass gatherings. And we wanted to kind of clarify our stance, um, county stance as well. At this time, our department, meaning public department, public health department, is not requiring any event organizer to cancel public events or mass gatherings. So that's our county, San Marino Public Health County's stance at this moment. All event organizers are encouraged to review the California Department of Public Health's guidance for public event organizers slash mass gatherings to determine whether or not they can accommodate their attendees. It is up to the event organizer to decide on event cancellation. If the organizer would like assistance on determining the need to cancel, they are more than welcome to contact the department. If an attendee would like to request an event to be canceled, they should contact the event organizer or director. So that is the most uh, current update. And if you have any questions, please contact our office as well. Thank you. Thank you. Mayor Art Bennett, City of Chino Hills. Good evening. And uh, President Luth, board members, uh, executive staff and audience. Um, I guess I have to start out by saying, wow. You know, to be in the presence of so many heroes tonight was overwhelming. 
you know my position and my my uh, beliefs in this fire department. They've saved my life twice, and uh, can't say enough for it. A couple of them are in this room, and uh, I want to thank them for that. But uh, uh, on the lighter note, I will tell you that. Uh, uh, the city of Chino Hills made a report last night as well. We're staying on top of the corona uh, virus as well. Uh, there are enough public entities and agencies that are out there that are all basically putting out guidelines for what's going on. Uh, but I would echo what Suzette says. We, we need to not panic. Uh, we are lucky when you consider the population of China and how many deaths they've had there, you know, 1.4 billion people, you know, over a billion people more than here. I'm not minimizing this, but, you know, general safe hygiene practices will do a lot to curb this. So we, I think we need to be sure uh, to do that uh, as much as we can and observe that. A couple things that are coming up uh, for the city of Chino Hills. We're going to have a water conservation design uh, sign contest. It's going to be open for students from kindergarten Garden to uh, 12th grade. Uh, the entries are due by 4 p.m. on uh, Friday, March 20th. You can uh, get the poster rules and everything at chinohills.org slash design assign. Uh, we also, for the adults that seem to be left out during uh, uh, Easter, we're going to have an adult Easter egg scramble. It is for age 18 plus. It's going to be for Friday, on Friday, April 3rd. Registration starts on Wednesday, April, well, started back on February 12th. It's going to be at Chino Hills Community Park. $16 uh, tickets, and uh, last year sold out. And the egg hunt will begin at 8 o'clock in, in the dark. Bring your own flashlight and basket. 7,000 eggs, and some have coupons for $3,000 worth of prize in total. So if you're an adult and you feel left out about hiding eggs, go hunt some yourself. And then, of course, for the kids, we have the Easter egg excitement. Uh, and that date is going to be on Saturday the 11th uh, at Community uh, uh, Park as well. And, of course, the one thing I'd be remiss if we didn't mention, because we're talking about celebrating all of the brave heroes that we have in this room and out there uh, protecting us on a daily basis, we're going to have our joint salute to public safety that's sponsored by the chamber and by the cities. That will be coming up next week on March 19th from 11.30 to 1 at Los Serranos. You can get tickets uh, through the city, and you probably get tickets here. I'm not sure, Sandra, if you're offering those uh, as, as well. But uh, it, it gives our organization, our cities, and that the opportunity to thank each and every one of you firefighters and our police as well uh, for the jobs that you do on a daily basis where you put your life on the line uh, to make sure that we safe are, are safe. And we really, really do appreciate that. So thank you. And, uh, you know, to everybody that was here, uh, please pass on the word to those that were recipients of the awards that uh, we're all very, very proud of them. And it's well-deserved. And uh, thank you very much for the opportunity to say something. Thank you. Director Stephen Eli, Inland Empire Utility Agency. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. President, Madam Vice President, staff, board. Um, I uh, was so happy to be able to participate last Saturday at the St. Patty's event put on by your, your wonderful foundation. I have to say that it was a spectacular event, and uh, while there were some fears, I guess, that people wouldn't show up, obviously they did, and, and everything went great. Um, your, you know, I, I was talking to Jeff Titula about this. Um, the last few, the, the fire department's always been great, I have to say, in the 22 years I've lived here. But in the last few years, there's a real sea change of being outward and public and really getting in the community more and more. And it, it's, a, it's a fireball. I'm sorry, it's a snowball. No pun intended here, sorry. <laughs> it's a snowball effect because the positivity, uh, you know, and, and what we witnessed tonight, uh, the the captain whose, lives was sa whose life was saved, and you know, that's the essence of what what you do here, and the the community partnerships, and you know, bringing us along to be with you. And I, I come, I try to come about every other month to make sure I, I come here and see you. But it's going on daily. Our staffs are working well together. Um, our electeds are working well together, and I truly appreciate you and the service you provide our community. Um, and I happen to, my district happens to cover the exact same area as yours, uh, Chino and Chino Hills, and the, the partnerships and the way 
your chief, your leadership of your board is out there time and again in the community and, and working towards the, the public good. It's, you know, uh, in the water world, we're seeing a, a few districts, especially in the South LA area, um, where there's, and, and in Rialto right now, where there's a lots of trouble and there's, there's misdeeds and there's financial mishaps, I'll call them. Um, we don't see that here in the Chino Valley, with good reason, because we've got good leadership, you've got a solid staff, your CAFR report, your financial report for five years. Um, uh, although I will tell you, Steve, uh, our agency has done it for 20 years, so you've got a lot of work to do. <laughs> but in all, in all seriousness, I do appreciate you, and um, the, you know, we're, we're, uh, we too are looking at the uh, COVID-19 issues very carefully and in protecting our, our citizens, our staff, some of whom are, happen to be our citizens as well, and I, I know you are too, so we all just have to keep, keep, keep our ears and eyes open and keep working together responsibly. And, and I think that, that's a watchword uh, that we'll talk about later in, in, in your agenda. Thank you. Thank you. Consent calendar. All right. Uh, do any of the board members have any items you'd like to pull from the consent calendar? Yes, I'd like to pull item one. Item one. Number three, please. And three. Anything else? Okay. Just making my notes here. Let's see here. Okay. Uh, is there any public comment on the consent calendar? Seeing none. Do we have a motion to move items two, four, five, and six? Motion to approve. Second that. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 It carries unanimously. And let's go to um, item one. Director DeMonico. Uh, yes, I pulled item one um, specifically for the minutes of the February 19th meeting, the special board me meeting we had. It was an off-site meeting, but it was an open board meeting. And uh, the minutes, uh, we don't really have any minutes for that. And I wanted to ask, when we usually have those types of board meetings, and uh, we had our consultant there, do we get a written report? We usually get a written report on those, or will we be getting a written report on that meeting? I, I believe that there's a draft uh, pertaining to my evaluation that has been provided to President Luth from the consultant. Okay, yes. so, so we will be getting that a will be report. coming forward. Yes. Okay. And then I got another comment to make on that. That because that was an offsite, and we've never recorded those in the past. There were things that were said at that meeting that I think uh, we really need to record those meetings, either audio or, vi or, or video or both. And I would like to recommend that in the future, any meeting we have, whether it's here or offsite or wherever, if it's an open board meeting, that we record it. And with that, I'll move to approve item one. Okay. Do we have a second? Second. All right, have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, passes unanimously. And item three, Director Krieger. Uh, Steve, this for you. Um, with uh, the Fed changing the rate, um, how's that going to affect our long-term investments? Has that? So you're referring to the uh, Fed funds yeah. rate cut? So th those tend to be um, directly impactful of short-term rates. However, they do have tend to have uh, indirect impact on long-term rates. Uh, I think probably less so the Fed funds rate cut uh, versus the potential economic impact of the uh, current scenario with the COVID-19 um, has potential to keep interest rates low for some period of time, depending on, at this point, how sustained the economic downturn uh, may be associated with that scenario. Uh, obviously, we're very early on in that uh, sort of new normal, and it remains to be seen how long and how significant that impact's going to be. But all indicators seem to indicate that it'll get worse before it gets better. So I would suspect that we're in for a sustained period of, uh, of continuing fluctuation in the equity markets and a low interest rate environment for probably some time, several months at a minimum. Right. With that, I move to approve. 
Thank second. you. A second. Second. All right. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. And that also carries 5 0. Uh, with that, I'm going to go ahead and open the public hearing. Public hearing. President Luth, uh, members of the board, the purpose of the re this report is for the board directors to provide for public comment and conduct a second reading <clears throat> adoption of ordinance number 2020-01, increasing the compensation of the board of directors effective July 1st, 2020. At the regular meeting held on February 12th, 2020, the board of directors uh, introduced ordinance number 2020-01, conducted a first reading and allowed for public comment. The Board of Directors also set today, March 11th, 2020, as a public hearing for the second reading and adoption of Ordinance 2020-01. Board member compensation is currently set at 157 and 50 cents per meeting as adopted by Ordinance 2018-01. As currently permitted by state law and the fire district policy and procedures, the maximum allowable current increase per meeting could be up to 5% per year for each calendar year following the effective date of the last adjustment. However, at the January 8, 2020 board meeting, the majority of the board voted to move forward with adopting an ordinance to increase board compensation by 2.5% for each calendar year following the effective date of the last adjustment. Ordinance number 202001 reflects a $7.50 increase per meeting, rounding the new amount per meeting to a total of 165. If the ordinance is adopted, the maximum number of compensable meetings will remain at 10 days per month, and only one per diem per day will be paid regardless of how many meetings are attended. The ordinance will be effective July 1st, 2020, following a 60-day waiting period and in compliance with the fire district policy and procedures for the board of directors. It is recommended that the board of directors following public hearing conduct a second reading of ordinance 2020-2001, increasing the compensation of the board of directors effective July 1, 2020, approve reading the ordinance, the, uh, excuse me, approve waiving the reading of the entire ordinance and read the ordinance by number and title only, advise the public that a copy of ordinance 2020-01 is available for public inspection at fire district headquarters and adopt ordinance 2020-01, which will become effective July 1st, 2020, following a 60-day waiting period and in compliance with the fire district policy and procedures for board of directors. Right, with that, is there any public comment? Seeing none, I'll close the public hearing and then is there any board comment? No, is there a motion? Move to approve. Is there a motion to approve, is there a second? I'll second that. All right, I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And opposed? No. All right, carries 4-1, the no being Director DeMonico. And would the, uh, uh, clerk, would you, um, um, Hanley, would you please read the ordinance by number and title only? Yes. Ordinance number 2020-01, an ordinance of the Board of Directors of the Chino Valley Independent Fire District, County of San Bernardino, State of California, increasing the compensation of the Chino Valley Independent Fire District Board of Directors. Old business, none. New business. Item number seven, 2019-20 mid-year budget review and analysis. <coughs> Purpose is to conduct a mid-year budget review for discussion purposes. <clears throat> Report by Finance Director Steve Heidi. President Luth, members of the board, good evening. Uh, staffs conducted a mid-year budget review and analysis as of January 31, 2020. District was seven months into our uh, fiscal 1920 year, about 58%. The associated revenues appear to be uh, largely on track, it is uh, certainly the good news to report. Uh, we anticipate uh, potentially coming in slightly better uh, than budget, uh, but our revenues appear uh, solid. On the expenditure side, uh, a little bit of a mixed 
bag, if you will. Uh, services and supplies uh, look like they're about where we would expect at this point in the fiscal year. Um, however, uh, in the salary and benefits area, um, we are trending, uh, unfortunately, uh, higher than uh, budget and um, than our prior four uh, fiscal years, about three to four percent of the average uh, of our last uh, four years. Included in the report is an attachment of our monthly financial report at January 31. Uh, shaded lines in blue represent favorable budget trends, while those shaded in red represent our unfavorable trends. Of particular note uh, in the workers' comp area, both uh, labor associated with coverage for uh, workers' comp illness and injury, as well as uh, associated uh, care, treatment, and legal expenses uh, are significantly over budget in a, about a three-year trend. Uh, we have seen increases the last couple of fiscal years. We did increase our budget allocation uh, for 1920, and even in spite of that, we are anticipating uh, significant adjustments when we bring forward uh, our request for budget adjustment in April. Based on current trends, uh, we would anticipate uh, requesting authority of about a million dollars um, on a net basis, largely due to the projected fiscal impacts of increasing uh, workers' compensation expenses. Uh, with that said, uh, staff is also uh, contemplating potentially recommending um, consideration of, of additional payments toward uh, the district's uh, unfunded um, pension liabilities. So we may uh, br be bringing that forward as well. At this point, we wanted to just provide some preliminary information for the board and would anticipate uh, coming back for authority uh, next month. With that, the recommendation is that the board receive and file this report, and I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. Does anyone have any questions or comments at this time? No? Okay. As we discussed this in, in finance uh, not too long ago as well and uh, yeah it's unfortunate uh, but it is real and um, so we'll uh, we understand this will be coming at our next meeting um, so if there's nothing else nothing further no all right then we will receive and file item number eight review previous board action pertaining to director Wynn Williams Purposes for the board directors to discuss previous action pertaining to Director Wynn Williams' conduct and consider potential reinstatement or modifications. It is recommended that the board directors discuss previous action pertaining to Director Wynn Williams' conduct and consider potential reinstatements or modifications and take any action as appropriate. Report by President Luth. Thank you. Shortly after I became president of the board, Wynn contacted me and expressed the desire to change his opportunity to participate as a board member and to change the rancor that has been prevalent in many previous board meetings. In various meetings with myself, Mike Messina, and the board, he has stated he deserves to be reinstated as a full board member because he has been good, that, there are, that we are depriving him of his rights, and we, the board, should do the right thing, which he defined as reinstating him as a firefighter paramedic. While I disagree with Wynn's position and demands, I do think it is in the best interest of the district to reconsider the board's past actions regarding Wynn. Wynn felt I, as president, could make these changes. I disagreed and believe they require board resolution as the board made decisions in response to Wynn's actions. I asked Wynn to wait to discuss this requ his request with the full board at our workshop. At our workshop, we had devoted considerable time to have this discussion. However, from the start, during other discussion items, including the chief's evaluation, it became clear Wynn was not going to be seeking reconciliation with the balance of the board or with the chief. Wynn made continual unrelated comments and demands and threats against the district and the chief if he did not get his way. He continually attempted to make discussions about him and his perceived wrongs against him. He suggested there was something coming if he did not get what he wanted. 
I had hoped we could move past these disparate, divisive comments and issues and find ways to work together to function in the best interest of the district and best serve the community we are elected to represent. It was a frustrating, disappointing meeting for me and I'm sure for all of us. In spite of this, I still feel it is in the best interest of the district to find ways to work together and consider making changes to some of the actions this board took regarding when. So I propose the following change. Reinstate Wynn's access to the board office. This would require updating Wynn's FOB to allow him access to the board office only. Access to administrative office and staff would continue to require adherence to previous board action and board policy. Because of Wynn's threats to the district, I propose the following changes after we see what action Wynn takes in the next two months. When asked, Wynn stated he did not know what he was going to do, so I feel it is prudent to wait and see. If Wynn does not carry out his threats to, quote, burn the district, unquote, or do damage to the district, then I propose we allow his attendance at district-sponsored events per policy 1050L with per diem if applicable. This would include badge pinning, the 9-11 memorial, state of the district filming and attendance, district open house, the chamber salute to public safety. I also the, propose the board give me the authority to assign liaison responsibility to win and make changes in the current assignments to accommodate this modification. If the board takes action on any of my proposals, I ask that the motion include language to give the president authority to remove or change any or all of the items being reinstated if the president becomes aware of any action or comments by Wynn that the president believes are inappropriate or intended to attack or damage the district and or the chief. I'd be open to further discussion of possible changes to Wynn's status as we see how things progress regarding Wynn's demands and actions. Will Wynn participate in comment out of anger and revenge or in the best interests of the district? Will Wynn adhere to board policy and actions taken by the board will when refrain from inappropriate comments or actions towards staff. I remain hopeful this entire board can work together to fulfill our responsibility and obligations to the district and the community we, re we represent to lead in the best interests of the district, not personal desires or venge vengeful anger. And with that, I would open this to public comment. I have one request to speak from Steve Alley. Mr. President, Stephen Eli, 22-year resident of Chino Hills, as you know, also an elected director on the Inland Empire Utilities Agency, but I'm speaking as a resident, not, not on behalf of IEUA. Um, we spoke, I spoke earlier about reactions to the current pandemic as the World Health Organization mentioned it, and I think there's a parallel here. I think that this board has regrettably had to take action to protect the public and to protect, most importantly, its employees, especially the chief and the clerk, from behaviors that are unacceptable in a public servant. Unacceptable. And you started your conversation um, with some vague descriptions of uh, frustrations, but what has been, and this was in a public meeting, so no one's telling tales out of school, what's been reported to me were uh, commentary made about retaliation against an employee in the district. Actions of an elected public official retaliating against somebody. That's unacceptable. As public officials, as elected directors, we are supposed to be above reproach. We are supposed to act always in the best interests of the public we serve, the 175,000 people in the Chino Valley. That's unacceptable. And to, to think of changing what has been put in place after months of wasted resources and time because of somebody's personal jihad is unacceptable to me. It's unacceptable to me that you would change what's been in place on the whim, hope, and prayer that somebody will behave better if they get a little bit of what they want. And that's really what, what I'm hearing here. Um, obviously, I haven't been involved in all the discussions, but I will tell you that it's appalling to me that an elected director would retaliate against the chief of, of the fire district. I've been in this room when he's essentially tried to give that chief a review, his own personal review, outside of the normal personnel practices, in public, made statements that if they were coming from somebody who was rational, 
would be um, detrimental to the district. The district could be exposed to liability. Luckily, your chief is, is a realist and he understands the source of where it's coming from, right? But comments about the chief's performance, about wasting money on learning, on having paramedics, you saw living proof tonight that that's not true. So time and again in public, Lord knows what's going on in private, this director has uh, abandoned his public responsibilities and to remove the censures at this point in time, when, he, when just at the, at the workshop just a couple weeks ago, comments were made about people, uh, people's religious beliefs, offhand commentary like that, it's unacceptable. And unless there's a behavioral change, I don't understand why this elected body would, would not continue to protect the chief, the clerk, and any other one of your staff let alone the public, by changing uh, where you're at. So that's my comment. Thank you. President Luth, Board Directors, <clears throat> Chief. Um, I don't want to be up here right now, but I'm going to be forced to because you guys are considering taking this actions. I came up here exactly six months ago asking, you know, was Director Wynn giving access, Director Williams having access to your guys' computer system to anyone else to this, you know, has anyone been writing letters on his behalf and him, you know, not stating if they were or not? Those questions were not answered, much less the stuff that happened after. You guys know, as he stated, that you know we went to court with the information I gave you about him possibly not having the correct address. In court, under oath, he claimed that I tried to extort him, which the judge found completely false. You guys are opening yourselves up to liabilities by you know, giving him access to the director's office if that's what you guys want to do and in a good faith effort, fine, that's you guys. But anything above that that is not going to be recorded is opening you up to liability. And you're, you will create you know, the actions. He's been good for three months, but before that, he came up right after you guys censored him for the third time and you know, put his hands on a member of this department and, and commented, you know, I don't care, you know, what are they going to do, censor me again? His complete disregard for your guys' you know, regulation you know, just because he's not said anything for three months is enough to disregard the three months of actions before that. And actually, I think it was six months of actions from the first censor. You know, he had to be censored three times. So I think any actions you do today in terms of putting him out in the public, which are in a less formal and less controlled environment where things may be said are opening the department up to liabilities that will extend out to, you know, who knows what. And I just, I recommend it against it. Uh, dealing with him in court and seeing, you know, the threats he makes, I would just not recommend it. I, I you know, he's not apologized. He's not condoned, you know, he's not tried to answer basic questions. He's never provided letters, which is what this all started from in the very beginning. You know, if he wants to make those amends and start all over, then make a full disclosure of your conflicts, of your, the letters that all this started from, of all that, and then show us that you're trying to make a good faith effort. I've not seen a good faith effort or anything that shows any reason to, you know, do anything above, you know, if you guys want to let him come in and, you know, feel like the contact that, you know, doesn't have to be done through the chief and take some of that off of him, or he can come in and pick up his mail and leave, Fine, that's on you guys. But anything above that, I would not recommend it. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? Seeing none. We'll close the public comment. Is there any comments from the board? None? Well, no, I've got comments. Does somebody? Oh, okay. I can go first, or somebody else can go first. Director DeMonico. Okay, well, I pulled item one, 
which was the minutes of the meeting, because we didn't have the things reflected in the minutes that you read just a little bit ago. I was really surprised to see this on the agenda tonight. Uh, we did not take any action to put this on the agenda, but it doesn't need action to be placed here. But with that being said, there were a lot of things said by Mr. Williams in that meeting. You referenced a lot of them. And uh, quite frankly, I wish we had a videotape because a picture's worth a thousand words and uh, in the audio. And uh, was really shocked with his remarks about the vindictiveness of why he did things, and particularly the director Krieger. That was the first one out of the gate. And he, did, and he said he did everything he's done was for vindictiveness. He does not have any intent to improve. He threatened us with disruptiveness. You said it here again tonight. Mm -hmm. He threatened us with extortion. You said it here tonight. If we, if we give him and give in to this, he's extorted us, and we've allowed him to do that. And uh, quite frankly, I, 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 I cannot support that. Additionally, in that meeting, what, what was told us is when we were in closed session, he left the closed session room and went out in the hall, and there were locked office doors, and he was shaking a doorknob of a locked office, trying to get into the office. His excuse was, was well, I thought maybe somebody would have been in there. I wanted to talk to him. That's unacceptable. That's, that's just absurd. And uh, I, I don't know. I just uh, I have a lot of frustrations with that. So I do not support moving anything forward with Mr. Williams. And my vote is going to be to leave things as they are and to let him prove over a period of time that he is going to change. But he's told us he's not. But I would love to see him do that. So with that being said, until he changes and he truly tries to become a member of this board and truly tries to represent the public for the office of which he was elected to represent, uh, I await to see that before I make any positive decisions. Right now, I'm voting no. Director Krieger? I'm going to hold off for now. All right. Okay. Vice President Ronda Sillinger. Thank you. So. <clears throat> I went into our special workshop with an extremely open mind and having nothing but compassion for Mr. or Director Williams and saying, okay, you know, I, I, I need, I will take a bullet for this district. I love this district. I serve this district with all my heart. It means everything to me. And I was willing to change my view about the situation for the better of the district. However, the actions during that workshop were appalling to me. Um, the fact that I cannot protect our fire chief, we as a board, against the comments of retaliation is scary. It, it's, it, you, this, this is just absolutely ludicrous that in this day and age with all the, the harassment, um, policies and everything out there that we as a board cannot protect our own employee against board members' comments. I also, you know, I, I was sickened at the fact that the retaliation against Director Krieger, the impact that it had on his family making the paper and such, and when it was an actual just retaliation, and there really wasn't any worth, and then he says, well, we'll talk about it. You know, he had the conversation. You, we'll talk about this, and maybe I'll make it better. I, I just, the the constant extortion. I mean, I, the vindictiveness. Um, I, I'm, I with a good heart, cannot agree. And I, 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 I really tried. I truly, truly tried, to really want to, you know, do this. I had no. I, I, I don't dislike you at all, Director Williams. I do not. It's your behavior that's appalling to me. And, you know, we all had to take a required harassment class that we are required to take. But yet there's actions that Director Williams is doing that is t absolutely against all of those procedures. You know, quick pro quo, the, you know, I mean, it, it, we, have, we have a situation here. And I gave my word that I would do everything for this district, for the board. Um, to try to make things right. I gave you my word. I gave you my word. Mm -hmm. We had a conversation together, and I gave you my word. Um, but with a good heart, and I, I mean, 
I might consider the board office, but I want to know for what purpose. Like, let's, I need to know the identification of what purpose are we going to give him, you know, for that. I don't go to the board office, and I'm the vice president. I handle all my duties from home, from, you know, the phone, whatever. Um, the only time I make my way into the board office is when I have an agenda review. We typically will have it there. So I'm not sure. I want to know, like, for what purpose is um, is that particular um, taken. Um, if we were to ever decide that we want to allow him to district events, I think that harassment class needs to be retaken and, and I, I, I think fully taken. And maybe we, you know, ask him if he truly understands the ramifications of it. You know, there's certain things, I don't know if it's filters or I don't know if just quite not understanding, but there's certain questions that he asks that are inappropriate. Um, comments in public, you know, maybe you can ask your friend those particular or make those comments about somebody's, um, you know, their race, um, their religion or that, you know, if it's your friend, maybe you joke around, but you just don't do that in a public setting. You do not do that. Um, us as public officials, we need, we need to be setting examples, an example always for this district and for our community. So I'm, I'm not there, Harvey. I gave you my word, but I can't with a good heart. Um, and I'm not being vengeful by all reasons, but you know, by any reason, I just can't move to approve that. All right. Director Williams, any comments? Am I going to be last? I have no comment. The only thing I can say is I'm damned if I do say anything, and I'm damned if I don't. I think for that, then I'll speak. Um, I, as well, went into the workshop hoping that it would have gone different. Um, the words of vengeance and retaliation came up out of your mouth about the letter that you sent to the district attorney about me came up over and over again. The word retaliation against the fire chief came up over and over again during that workshop. The words retaliation was used against Director DeMonico and against employees. And then you still ask that we reinstate you because you behave for two months. I appreciate the fact that you've behaved for two months, going on three now. I think that's a good start. By you not making a comment tonight is not a good start. There were things that I think you could have said tonight uh, publicly that you, that, that, that you chose not to say. Um, Regarding the board office, uh, uh, like you, Sarah, I, I don't go into the board office. My mail is sitting here when I get here, unless if there's a specific reason. So if we gave them access to the board office, I, 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 uh, I'm fine with that. Like what Director Monaco said, I'd like to see more time uh, out of it. I want to function as a board, as a whole board, together. Uh, but the time has not been there for me yet. Uh, and I have not seen you demonstrate that uh, uh, yet to me personally or to the rest of the board. So um, I'd be open to have the conversation about the board office, but that's it at this time. All right. Well, unless there's a motion, and I'm certainly sensing there is not going to be, so that uh, item will and with no action. And with that, we'll move on to the fire chief's comments. President Luth, members of the board, good evening. Uh, before I get to my comments, I'd like to offer uh, this to the board. I'd be willing to waive my rights to privacy regarding my evaluation if the board would like to discuss that publicly at a future meeting. I think it would be important for the public to understand uh, the viewpoints of all of our board members related to my performance. Under personnel development activities, on February 13th, Finance Director Heidi and I attended a Chino Valley Chamber of Commerce luncheon where State Treasurer Fiona Ma spoke about some new programs that she's instituting. 
Inspector Jim Powderly attended the California Conference of Arson Investigators from February 24th through the 27th. Uh, two personnel from the Chino Valley Fire District participated in the 2020 Police and Fire Winter Games held February 24th through the 27th at Mammoth Mountain. Approximately 100 skiers and snowboarders competed in Solemn, Giant Solemn, and Super Giant Solemn over three days. Firefighter paramedic Herringer competed in skiing, and Deputy Fire Marshal Daco competed in snowboarding. Uh, DFM Daco took second place in the Super Giant Solemn competition. Deputy Chief Cook, Deputy Chief Williams and I attended a San Bernardino County Fire Chiefs Association Chiefs Retreat at the UCLA Conference Center in Lake Arrowhead, February 26th and the 27th. The purpose of the event was discussing partnering together to improve the delivery of emergency medical services in our county. Uh, under board activities and public relations, several board members and staff attended the Mayor's Prayer Breakfast on February 19th at Los Serrano's Country Club. Uh, board members and staff attended a special board meeting workshop on, that was on the 19th and that was at Fire Station 62. Uh, board members attended the Every 15 Minutes event on March 5th at Ruben SIL High School. Under organizational items of interest, the fire district will be one of three agencies in the county participating in a trial study using a tiered dispatch model. The purpose of the pilot program is to evaluate the current emergency medical system delivery system, excuse me, emergency medical system in different parts of the county and the nexus to emergency medical dispatch system. During this trial, we will look to alter our medical response model to low acuity calls based on information obtained during the emergency medical dispatch process at Comp Center. Uh, we anticipate seeing improvement in response times to high acuity calls as this model will allow for better utilization of our resources. And high acuity calls would be an example of Captain Heitman's event. And those are the calls that we absolutely want a better response time to. Uh, we recently met with Local 3522 to discuss the pilot program. And from that meeting, an ad hoc committee has been formed. The ad hoc committee has been tasked with the development of an operational plan for the pilot program. It is anticipated that the trial period will last 12 months. We are very excited about this opportunity and plan to have a presentation for you, at about, for you about it at the April Board of Directors meeting. And I'd like to ask Deputy Chief Williams to provide an update on COVID-19. Uh, good morning, uh, good morning, good evening. Uh, we'll, we'll get there soon enough, we'll get there soon enough. Uh, good evening, uh, President Luth and members of the board. Um, as you heard tonight, much about the COVID-19 or coronavirus, coronavirus um, there's a lot going on. I echo a lot of the sentiments that were said tonight. I can assure you that as an organization, we are on the front lines of this. Uh, mm -hmm. We're in weekly meetings, conference, teleconferences that are with agencies and organizations across, uh, across the nation. And uh, uh, working to stay with this, it's a very dynamic situation. It seems to change from day to day. Uh, but we're we're getting intel in um, in real time so that we can be flexible and agile and apply the the lessons learned and the information that's coming our direction to keep our personnel safe and to serve our district to the very highest level that we can. Um, uh, the The only caution that I would have is that um, as we do go forward, uh, this isn't something that's limited to Chino Valley Fire District. But there, there is truly a shortage of uh, masks, uh, gowns, these kinds of items that, that we utilize to protect our personnel. And that's, again, that's not something that's specific to us, uh, but it is a challenge that we probably will face with, with this thing continuing to increase and, and gain some steam. And uh, we're doing everything that we can to, uh, to look at other opportunities to, to gather these uh, materials that we need. Uh, but. Uh, truly, that is a concern that we may be dealing with in a, a short time here. And so with that, uh, that's the end of our report. And if you have any questions. Thank you, Chief. Under upcoming events, the Fire District's quarterly meeting with the City of Chino is scheduled for March 12th at 2.30 p.m. at the Chino City Hall. The monthly ASB CSD meeting was scheduled to take place on March 16th, but we did see notification earlier this evening that that has been canceled. Uh, the Salute to Public Safety event is scheduled for March 19th at 11.30 a.m. at Los Serrano's Country Club. A Finance Committee meeting is scheduled for March 23rd at 8 a.m. here at our administrative offices. The SDRMA Spring Education Day will be held on March 24th in Sacramento. And the Fire District's quarterly meeting with the City of Chino Hills is scheduled for March 25th at 3 p.m. Uh, and my final comment tonight, I've forwarded a couple emails to the board recently. Uh, we have one of our current employees that uh, was recently diagnosed with cancer and also a uh, retiree of the district that is battling cancer. I just ask everyone to keep those two men and their families in your thoughts and prayers. That concludes my comments for this evening. Thank you, Chief.
And we'll move into board member comments. Director Williams. Thank you. I just wanted to uh, say uh, that I think the uh, fire department has done a good job, and I'm thinking about uh, Bill Heitman and how things were handled in regards to that. That was a, a great report. And uh, I did go to the uh, school, the high school, um, every 15 minutes, and they did a great job. And uh, it was uh, quite a, a good thing that they did. I, I, I had to congratulate the kids on their performance out there. They, they, uh, it was inspiring in the sense that um, I would have thought there'd be clowning around and goofing around and stuff like that, but there wasn't. It was uh, done very well, and they all acted uh, very nice, and uh, I just thought that was great also. So um, I think that's about all I have to say. Thank you. Director Krieger. Yeah, thank you. Um, I missed the last city of uh, Chino Council meeting. Um, it was my son's birthday, and Sometimes there's more important things to do than go to a city council meeting. No offense, Art. <laughs> um, but uh, uh, I did miss that, but I did attend the one prior to that. Uh, I've attended the school board meetings. Um, they're reacting to the virus as, as well. Um, the superintendent, they have not shut down any schools, uh, but the superintendent uh, has something out on their website about that. I did attend the, I'm going to say around the A, ASBCSDA, I don't know, it's a real long acronym. The Association of Special Districts for San Bernardino County, wh whatever the acronym is. Uh, that meeting um, out in Fontana, um, I met with the chief. Uh, I did my mandatory uh, sexual harassment training, uh, attended the special workshop. Uh, I sadly missed the St. Patrick's Day event, something that I was really looking forward to, but uh, I got taken out of town. Uh, so I was not able to attend that. I really want to congratulate uh, Philip Vasquez and the Explorers and, and everybody who helps participate in that program. That's a lot of extra dedication that people put in and uh, from, from our own department members to the parents and to the kids themselves. So congratulations to all them um, for, for aging out, for their uh, being recognized tonight. Uh, it was great to see uh, Bill here tonight and, and listen to the words that he said, and congratulations to, uh, to the shift that, that really helped save him. And, of course, congratulations to Steve and to Matt for being employees of the year. Fantastic men. Uh, it's great, great to know them and work with them. And, and like you said about Steve, it's, uh, um, he's been such a, a great asset. Uh, I don't think we really knew what he was going to do when we hired him, and uh, he's he's been a jack of all trades, and and I really liked what he said about Matt. If we could hire you know another uh, eleven people right now, <laughs> just like him, that would be great. So, uh, with that, I'll conclude my comments. Thank you. All right, Director DeMonico. Yes, uh, I did attend the uh, uh, Chino Hills Council meetings, and th thank thank you, Mayor. It made my job easier. I don't have no report. <laughs> so, <laughs> and. Uh, but also the mayor's prayer breakfast, that was phenomenal. And Sylvia, that was great. That was wonderful uh, and really inspirational. And uh, can't wait for the next one. So I'm going to thank you for that. Attended the St. Patrick's Day Foundation event. They did a wonderful job. The really neat thing, all that money comes back into the community through different things for everything from, I guess, Make a Child Smile to AEDs and trauma kits. So they do a great job. They raise a lot of money, and the money goes back into the communities. Um, I want to congratulate uh, everybody tonight, and I'll just start here real quick with the uh, Donate for Life. Mm -hmm. I've got the dot on my driver's license. I hope, hope everybody puts a dot on theirs. Uh, so that's, that's just a great, great thing. The Explorer Post for the Explorer Awards and those that are leaving and, and aging out, uh, hopefully some of those ones aging out, maybe they'll be future firefighters for us because I believe we have a number of employees now that are former Explorers. Um, uh, and then uh, Captain Heitman, if that story doesn't move you, I don't know what does. And, you know, we've gone through a lot over the past few years with the cardiac care program and uh, they've become a heart-safe community. And uh, 
I think it's paying off. And I believe I heard recently that our success rate is at a, a higher percentage now than just about everywhere else. And did I hear somewhere like 30 percent? We're getting a 30 percent survival rate compared to what? what, what? So, Director Nautica, prior to the program, we were below 10 percent, which is pretty typical across the nation. Uh, we'll actually have, we're planning another presentation for next month for an employee of uh, Canyon Hills Junior High School that was uh, saved by the actions of the staff there and our personnel as well. And we're hoping to recognize those folks. We'll have a little more information on the cardiac care program next month. But yes, the the preliminary data we're seeing, we're in the roughly in the 30% range now. Uh, and again, historically, those people uh, typically would not survive, uh, you know, less than one out of every 10 of those calls that we would go on would actually leave the hospital and the majority of those folks would not leave without some sort of significant deficit and we're seeing more and more stories like we did this evening with Captain Hyman. That's, that's phenomenal I'm looking forward to the presentation and, and I can say back back when I was a paramedic and we used to do leeches and bloodletting and those types of things our survival rate was even less so we've come a long ways and uh, just, 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 just proud of where, where we are today and what we're doing and the progress we're making and I think we're, we're leaps and bounds ahead of any, any other community I'm, I'm sorry but there, there were actually there were actually a lot of things we did back then that they don't do now and, and, and some of them are typical and you guys will remember this rotating tourniquets and you know those type icy sticks and we did those back in the, in the 70s so uh, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to date myself any time before the 70s. That's good enough. Uh, it sounds like <laughs> you just went enough. back a couple hundred years. <laughs> <laughs> but, but with that, I also want to congratulate Steve and Matt for the uh, being the employees and the firefighter of the year. So, And I can't think of a holiday coming. Oh, Easter. If we're, we, no, we're back before Easter, so I'll save my happy Easter till next meeting. All right. Okay. Vice President Rommel Sillinger. Okay, I'll try to make mine quick because you guys took a lot of my comments. Um, the mayor's prayer breakfast, I mirror everything that, that Sylvia said. It was amazing, and thank you for the support. One thing that um, I neglected to recognize is that we had a, a joint honor guard, and we and um, CVFD as well as Chino Police were part of that, and we really appreciate their... They, they were actually on duty, our guys, and so they quickly came. They did the presentation for us and they went back to work. So I really, really appreciate it. That's a tough morning, especially, you know, coming off, they're on the, they came, they worked all night, they had a rough night, came and did that for us and then went back to work. So really appreciative. Um, the Carbon Canyon Fire Safe Council meeting, we uh, were operating in a deficit, huge deficit, and we're looking for fundraising right now, looking for money within the community donors. Uh, the city of Brea did donate $1,000, so maybe the city of Chino Hills will up their 500 to 1000 I'll have to come and ask officially, but I, I, okay, <laughs> definitely I will. Um, also, I attended um, the uh, St. Patty's Day event, and that was an amazing. The, the foundation does a great job, and all the fundraising they do to um, to pour back into our community because everything goes directly back into our community. So I really appreciate all the hard work and effort uh, of everyone who's involved this whole district with that. And I um, attended a Chino Hills meeting. Regretfully, I had to miss last night. I had to work late, work function. Finance committee, um, our fire explorers, everyone had great comments about that. And firefighter of the year and employee of the year, um, two great individuals. And I'm so happy and proud that we're able to recognize them and to um, show the community some of our great works. And um, the unit citation award, that was awesome. I think that was the first time that I've seen that, to be honest with you. In all the years I've been as a board, have we, did I miss something maybe another time? Or? I believe that's the first time we've okay. presented that. Okay, that was awesome, amazing. Um, Bill Heitman's story was so heartfelt. I was getting up here and I'm not in like an emotional Terry person and actually um, really struck me hard because my husband was saved by people and um, you know given a second chance. So I understand the sediment and what he's saying and so appreciative of that. Um, as well as Rob from Donate for Life, the, the just understanding and being so close to that I know what those families are experiencing by having that second chance. So I'm so proud that we have worked so hard and thank you, Chief. And 
um, everybody in this district for making that commitment to our community and getting that further education and once again being a, just an amazing department. Um, one last thing, two last things. I agree with uh, Director DeMonico's comment earlier. I would like all of our meetings recorded and or filmed, um, whether we just have them here locally where we were able to film and record um, keep at all the meetings here, but I truly would like to see that happen moving forward. I know it's not up for a vote or anything, but I just want to make that comment. And with that, I just want to wish everyone a happy St. Patrick's Day. Um, it is a great fun um, next Tuesday, but please be responsible. Please don't drink and drive. It's very inexpensive to get a, a ride share, Uber, um, Lyft, or whatever. It's far less money than getting a 502 or even worse taking someone else's life for a careless act. So thank you, that's all. All right, thank you. Uh, let's see, the 18th and the third was Chino Council meetings and at the, on the meeting on the third, there was of course a lot of concern about the coronavirus. Virus. Chief did a good job of uh, bringing the, the council up to speed on what is going on from, from the district's perspective. The 19th was the workshop, 24th was a finance and ASBCSD meeting. Thank you. Uh, Superintendent um, uh, Rutherford spoke, did a great job. The mayor's prayer breakfast was awesome, very well done. Uh, kudos to everybody who had anything to do with that. What a nice event. Um, congratulations to all the explorers and to everyone who's involved and works that program and makes that such a, such a wonderful opportunity for, for our youth and to the heroes we saw here tonight and for what they did for Captain... Heitman, yeah, that's, I don't know how that story doesn't get to you and touch you, um, um, but it, it definitely brought a focus on the efforts of this district um, to become a heart safe and a bleed safe community and, and what, what that can mean. So that was awesome. Um, congratulations to Steve and Matt for all that they do. Um, I know we had a presentation, I think, maybe a couple years ago um, on the competition that Matt was in, and if you, it's amazing what they, they do, and they took first uh, and second last year, uh, first year before. It's quite a competition uh, right in front of all their peers. It's, it's pretty spectacular, and uh, the St. Patty's Day thing was awesome, and I, I appreciate hearing the comments about our foundation um, and being involved and engaged in the community. I, I just appreciate that so much. I think they're out there. They're, they're trying to get... Um, more involved, more engaged, and I just think that's a great thing. I think it's good for our community and it's good for this district. With that, I will adjourn this meeting to a regular meeting of the Board of Directors of the Chino Valley of Independent Fire District to be held Wednesday, April 8, 2020, at 6 p.m. at these district headquarters located at 14011 City Center 